paella, paella, bruschetta, bruschetta. I don't care what you call it, just as long as you cook it. But come on, let's get in from the rain. Welcome to Trevo's Kitchen. <laughs> Coming up on today's show, I stuff a beautiful whole haddock with a Jamaican style stir fried rice, a beautiful sweet chili chicken salad, then the most ultimate savage steak sambo you'll ever see, and we finish the show off with a fantastic plum tart. Now, I absolutely love this dish. And I better say it brings back a lot of great memories because it's where I proposed to my beautiful wife was in Jamaica. And when we were there, I was in this restaurant and I loved it because on the menu, you know how much I love simple food. The menu read stuffed fish. And I said, what kind of fish is it? And he goes, it's fish. And what's it stuffed with? Stuff. Ha! So I'm going to try and replicate it for you guys. It's a great dinner party dish. It's an absolute showstopper. It's a great family dish. Bring it down to the table and everybody tucks in. It is a beautiful fresh haddock right off the coast. I was out fishing this morning and caught it myself. Have the heat just medium so you're not under pressure and you can take your time and relax. That's what cooking is all about. So we're going to do a nice little fine chop on that. Nice and simple. And we're going to sweat this off. Of course there's garlic in it and a little bit of mushroom as well. How to crush the garlic without wasting money on a silly garlic crusher, the back of your knife, and just push it down. Put in our garlic. We've also got just a couple of different mushrooms here, and we're just gonna maybe quarter that into the pan as well. I tell you every single time, the most important thing in cooking is what? Season, 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 every single time. So we've got a little bit of our flake rock salt, and of course, a couple of twists of our black pepper and again I just got a little bit of our dried herbs not a huge amount just a little bit let's just kind of stir this up nicely I'm going to give it a little help in hand with some fantastic wild honey that we have here in Kerry but just prepare the pineapple I'll just take the top off and then the bottom and then probably peel about half of it and just take your time coming around the side of the pineapple we just take down this piece here right through the middle here we've got the core and we need to take that out, okay? Because it's very chewy and fibrous. So basically straight down the middle and then just at an angle, 45 degree angle straight down. And that's that kind of fibrous, chewy bit out. Nothing difficult, nothing technical. Now, so let's dice up our pineapple and we'll put in, I don't know, I might only use maybe say half of that. Have a good look at that guys. The mushrooms and the onions and the garlic nicely softening in. So give it a bit of shaky, shaky in the pan. And have a look at this. You use whatever you can find. But for today, I'm using beautiful red kidney beans, frozen peas. That's right. I don't care what anyone says. We all have one of these in our freezer. And a little bit of tinned sweet corn. This is such an economical dish. I love it. So in we go. Bang them all in. Shaky, shaky in the pan. But look at that. Mix it, mix it nicely. And the last thing we're gonna put into it, and then we can turn off the heat actually, I've got some, this is important, pre-cooked rice. And I'm gonna use long grain rice today, okay? So it's already cooked, you've already boiled it, and it's nice and cold, and in we go with the rice. And just kinda stir the pot in nicely. Look at that, just mix it up. I don't want that getting too hot, too hot. We've seasoned it, we've got it ready. That is perfect, just mix it up and we turn off our heat now. Get yourself two sheets of tin foil. Lovely. And basically you just wanna kinda plait it in the middle and put the fish on top, okay? So very simply. Look at that, simple. Now we're gonna throw our fish on top. Oh, come here baby. Right into the middle. And then we're gonna put a tray 
underneath that. So this is perfect. Bit of noise for a second. Now, and onto our tray. Now look at the cavity of the fish. It's not huge. We won't fit all that in. Whatever we don't fit in, we just heat it up just before we serve. But look at that. There's plenty of room in here. And that's now where we put in this beautiful stuffing. So don't worry if some of it falls out. It's going to be all closed up in the tin foil. Now, pack it all into that cavity. And don't worry now if you see a little bit of steam coming out, because this is going straight into the oven. And we'll kind of overstuff it as well, just so when you open it up, you get this beautiful waff. Okay, look at that. Such a simple dish. That's about a three pound fish. It might take about 30 minutes, but just check it. So don't be afraid. So the last thing we need to do, get that fish there. A little bit of lemon on top. Anybody can do this at home. Don't tell me you can't do this at home. Put it up on top. As simple as a bit of white wine to create our steam. Look at that. The last bit of seasoning. A little bit of rock salt on top. One last crack of the pepper. Take a good look of it, guys, because when I close it up, it's going in a preheated oven at 180 degrees. And we're gonna have no idea what's coming out until about 25, 30 minutes. Say goodbye, give it a kiss. See you soon. smell of the lemon, the white wine. This is, let me see if I can turn that around there for you guys. Be careful, it's hot. But just so you can see. Oh, this is just falling off the bone. Oh, oh came off in one piece. What a fluke. with a little piece of dill. What an incredible dish. It's a whole stuffed fish, Jamaican style. What's the theme of the show? It's simple, quick, fast, easy food. You are not too busy to cook. What are we gonna do? A sweet chili chicken salad. First thing we do is we start off with a little bit of a, a marinade. So a little bit of our sesame oil, a little bit of our walnut oil, and we put in a nice olive oil. It's a sweet chili chicken salad, so we've got sweet chili sauce. And actually, when I think about it, Worcester sauce. Now, breast of chicken, leg of chicken, whatever you want, but for today, I'm gonna use the breast of chicken. So we want this cooked nice and quickly. So look at that. See how it's cut nice and fine, nice and thin? I'm coming down, you're making the slice nice and big as well. That's for presentation as well. There is a method to all my madness. Let's just start to mix it up in the marinade. Always keep yourself clean as you go. Great practice, I say it all the time. Now, let's talk about our dressing and our salad. So what have we got? You can do any dressing you want. These are only just ideas. Don't stick, if you don't have one of these ingredients, don't worry about it. So, some fresh yogurt, a little bit of our sesame oil back in, because it's a lovely nutty little flavor into it. Some raspberry vinegar, doesn't matter. Balsamic, white wine vinegar, mirin, anything you want. Give it a simple little whisk. And that's your dressing, it's simple. Let me get the heat on, and about medium, so we're under no pressure and no panic. I've got a bit of, Carrot mange too, baby courgette, baby asparagus spears. Pop them in, you don't need to cook them, they're nice. The mange too, we're gonna go nice and fine in this. So, put in the chicken. Doesn't matter if it's not red hot at the moment. Kind of works better actually because we won't burn the sweet chili sauce. A little bit of rock salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of sweet corn, baby sweet corn. 
We'll do a bit of grated carrot. Grated carrot just seems to go on forever. I love it. I think we'll throw in a little bit of baby courgette. We're gonna throw in a little bit of a tomato. Put it in at an angle. Look at that. It's all presentation. It's all about the finished product. It's all about how's it gonna look on the plate. We eat with our eyes first, remember. Bit of shaky, shaky, flicky, flicky. That's nice. This actually isn't a million miles off, and I might just swap it over here for you now. And just for something a little bit different, we're gonna put in a little bit of our sesame oil here. I'm gonna put this beautiful halloumi cheese. It's great because it doesn't melt in the pan. It can really take the heat. And we just put that in to our pan. We're almost ready to serve. It's done in minutes. I know I waffle, I know I talk an awful lot. So a little bit of our, what have I got? I've got some uh, Swiss chard, some rocket, whatever lettuce you can get your hands on. So just sprinkle that in. Again, it's for color. Let's have a little look at that cheese first of all. Look at that, that's perfect. That's your color on it there now. That's exactly what we're looking for. And you see the way it holds its shape as well. It's not melting on us. That is fantastic. Turn off the heat. The residual heat will finish that off. This is stunning. Look at the colors in it. Perfect timing. Our salad just nicely onto the middle of the plate. Look at that. Beautiful. Make sure you get all the bits and pieces. sauce from the chicken there as well. That's where all the flavor is. Adds to the dressing. Look at that. It's quick, it's simple. Chop and change whatever ingredients you wanna. But it's a dish that's cooked in minutes and it's so tasty. Just to prove it. Have some. Wait, you see what's coming up next, guys. There's plenty more recipes. I'm only just getting warmed up, as always. Sometimes you just want to eat something simple like a steak sambo. That's exactly what we're going to do. We've got some simple sirloin steaks. That's about five, six ounces because they're going to cook really, really quickly. But to start off, let's get a little bit of a marinade going on. So olive oil, balsamic vinegar. The balsamic vinegar gives it a little bit of tartiness to it and also lovely flavor. And that's what we're looking for. So just mixy, mixy, mixy. We have a few steaks. I'm probably only gonna cook one because to be honest, I'm sick and tired of cooking for the crew at this stage. They haven't even said thanks once, have you lads? No, not at all. Wash the hands and I wanna show you how to make a fantastic mayonnaise. A lot of people, I suppose, are scared of making a mayonnaise because, well, they think it's complicated, but I'm gonna show you just how easy it is. So, crack in our egg and we're separating the egg like this. So just pour one side into the shell then let it all drip out, the egg white, you see that, nice and easy. Back in there, and in we go, one. And now these are large eggs. When you're making mayonnaise, just remember that the eggs can be funny. The yolk can be a little bit bigger than normal, so we don't really measure the oil that we're putting in. We're gonna use our eye. That's the whole concept of this series as well. Two, perfect. Now, what are we gonna throw in? A little bit of, here we got some Dijon mustard, so about maybe, Half a teaspoon, throw that in. Again, this is just for flavor. And we're gonna put in a little bit of lemon juice as well. And at this stage now, we're gonna add in a little bit of salt as well. So simple to start off. Let's get our whisk and just give it a nice little whisk around there. Get it all mixed up. Now, here's the thing, okay? That's nice and cold. 
We're using a plain sunflower oil or vegetable oil. We don't want an oil with strong flavor. We don't want an olive oil. We don't want a walnut oil, nothing like that. A simple, tasteless oil really. And pour it in nice and slowly. This is the key. If you pour it in too fast, it's gonna split on you. And this is what people are worried about. Only a little bit at the start. Start whisking. Pour in another little bit of oil. Nice and slow. And you can see it already. Look, it's beginning to thicken up already. Okay. Take your time with it. Another little bit. And as you get further and further into the process, you can add the oil in a little bit quicker. And the main thing, keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't split on you. And taste it as you go along. So finish it all up with a little bit more of a whisk. And that is your very simple, basic, mayonnaise. Now, if I was cooking for the whole crew, I would have been probably four or five egg yolks and done more, but this is my dish. I want you to think of steak, and the classic sauce that goes with it is a Bernays sauce. So we're gonna make this a kind of a Bernays mayonnaise. Doesn't that sound cool? And how you make that is you put in fresh tarragon into it. So we get out our lovely fresh tarragon. So we don't really want the stalks, just the leaves, and a nice little kind of a fine chop. Pop that in, straight into our mayonnaise. Fantastic. Give it one final whisk and we'll transfer it into our dish. I'm delighted with that. So I said it's a simple dish. So I went down to the shop and I bought a nice piece of ciabatta bread. And we're just gonna slice that right in half. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this under the grill, toast it and fry our steak off. And we can turn the heat on in our pan now as well. Let's just get a few mushrooms and a bit of onions. Give it two seconds for that pan to come. You want it smoking hot when you're like smoking hot, when the steak is gonna hit the pan. So you get that lovely crust on the meat straight away. I'll bring my steak a little bit closer. Perfect. Absolutely love it. And we're gonna season our steak now. A little bit of pepper. Yeah. Throw a tiny little bit of dry herbs on it as well. Don't be tempted, wait for it. If you can leave your hand over it, the pan, it's still not hot enough. Now, steak perfect, dry pan because we have all the oil on the steak. So let's put it in, flip it away from me if you're worried. Music to my ears. Now we season the other side. It's all about timing. So here we go. Now we chuck in the knob of butter. And look at that foaming up beautifully. In with our mushrooms, onions, spring onions. Everything in. That is absolutely perfect. Flip over the steak. And flip it down here. Stir away your mushrooms, your onions. And music to my ears. Do not be afraid to touch the steak. So that's now plenty of give on it. That's rare. So I'll give it about another maybe 35, 40 seconds maximum. Come in with the mushrooms and onions. Now, mushrooms and onions, perfect. Steak, perfect. Always you wanna rest the meat. So let's just leave it there for a second. Because this one's for me, oh, great idea. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> because this is my steak. And I've only got one more dish to cook. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Let the flame go down. Let's go check on our toast. Of course, there's gotta be a little bit of butter going onto it too. Ah, oh, yes. This is the stuff the dreams are made of. Mayonnaise, look at this. Look at that, this is absolutely Fantastic, beautiful. And another little bit there too, so good. Now, let's do this as rustic as it comes with my amazing cognac and brandy, mushrooms, onions. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. Look at that for a steak, beautiful. Right on top. Because we've tarragon through it, let's finish it just with a little bit of tarragon. You can put anything you want with it, you can put sauteed potatoes, you can put a couple of fries, or if you're feeling very guilty, you 
can put a salad. But for me, that's the perfect steak sandwich. That was the face on the cameraman with the flame coming up with the steak sandwich. My camera's up there. That's all part of the fun and all part of the show. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna finish the night off with a tart. I'm gonna show you how to make a beautiful plum and almond tart. We're gonna make what's known as a frangie pan. I know the tray's over here, but I wanna show you how to make this. Move our little bit of puff pastry over there. This is so simple. Shop bought puff pastry. And so what is frangie pan? Well, it's basically butter, sugar, ground almonds, and eggs. It's a simple recipe. Four ounces of soft butter, and we're gonna, what's known as cream it with a little bit of caster sugar. Four ounces of caster sugar as well. It's a simple recipe. Four, four, and four. Maybe four eggs, but they're big eggs, so we might only need two. So we're gonna go in and just cream the sugar with the butter. Now, we're gonna put in our four ounces of almonds. And like I said, there's nothing difficult here. Look how easy this is. A bowl, a bit of sugar, a bit of ground almonds, and then we're gonna mix it up with a few eggs. And that's our simple frangie pan. There's no doubt about it. It's much easier to do it in a machine, but I'm just showing it's not really that hard either. So now, we're gonna crack in a few eggs, one at a time. It looks as if it's gonna gone all messy and separated. Just keep working it, keep working it. It will come back. So crack our egg and put it in, lovely, and then we start to, and this is what helps the frangie pan kind of puff up and look absolutely amazing. So you can see the way we've worked in the first egg like that, now we can add in the second one. Now, absolutely perfect, and would you believe, they're large eggs, and I actually think two is plenty. Now, that's the consistency we're looking for, you see, it's not dropping off, but if you give it a bit of a shake, it falls down. That's exactly what we want. So let's set that aside for a second and talk about this puff pastry. There is a method to my madness with everything I do. I want you to leave the greaseproof paper underneath and we basically unroll. It's a frozen puff pastry from the shop, but just take your time unraveling it out. Perfect, and you'll see why we're leaving that paper on. So just shape it out like that. You don't even need to roll it out any further. That's perfect. So you come in with the knife. It's just to give you an idea where we're putting our frangie pan. Look at that, nice little mark, absolutely perfect. So we're gonna leave that here for a second and we're gonna basically just quarter our plums. So here you can see the crack in the plum there. That's exactly your line. Put the knife straight through, twist it, twist it, and twist it. Okay, don't worry, there's a big stone right in the middle so the knife won't go through. So just twist it around like so one without the stone, and get a little teaspoon. If it's nice and ripe like so, just put your spoon in and just pull it straight out. That one put up a little bit of a fight, but that's okay. There's your plum. Another little one here. They're all done. That's the last one. I might even use all these, but how bad? That's good. Now, very, very simply, here's what we're gonna do. So I want you to put your frangie pan right into your tray. So onto the puff pastry like so. This is such a simple tart, such a simple dessert. And don't worry if you have some left over because into the fridge, it's there for at least a week. Just whatever, how fresh your eggs are. And you can do it next time with pears, plums, anything. So here we go, spread it out. We might throw a bit more in. And that's why we did the lines. It doesn't need to be perfect, but just to give you a rough idea as to where it's going. Now, look at that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Almost, I love the rustic look on it. That, I'm very happy with showing that. It's like painting or plastering. Look at that. <laughs> now, all we gotta do, cut our plums in quarter. Probably see a bit more fancy music now at this stage. Okay, let's go. Put the plums in, in a row. What do we do? We put them down like that, actually, here. You'll see it's better this way. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. 
bit of egg wash, cracking the egg. We're gonna whisk it all up. It doesn't have to be perfect, just a little bit. And we're just going on the outside of the pastry so it goes nice and crispy and brown when it comes out of the oven. I love this dessert. This goes in preheated oven, 180 degrees Celsius, 350 give or take Fahrenheit. Now, 20, 25 minutes later, oh yes, an absolute cracker. Look at that. Have a good look here at the plums, guys, okay? Because now be careful, it's very, very hot, right? Lovely and syrupy, absolutely beautiful. Why did I leave the paper on? Get rid of this here. And one quick, sweet move. No cleaning up. Throw that in the bin, the tray is spotless. See, we give you all the top tips here. And all we need to do to finish it off, because it's an absolute beauty. Just a little bit of shake of the icing sugar. And you can serve that with whipped cream or you don't need to make whipped cream for you, do you? Tell you what, come back next week and I just might make it for you. But for now, Trevo's Kitchen and I'm out of here. <laughs>